It all comes down to the issue of malnutrition because it underlies every other health problem. This week, anchor Christian Amanpour went looking for novel solutions. Guatemala has one of the highest malnutrition rates in the world. In indigenous Mayan villages like this one, malnutrition can reach 80% of the population or more. It's not that children are dying of hunger, but they are starving for what they need to grow and to thrive. It's ironic that in this lush landscape of coffee, corn and sugar, so many people are so chronically malnourished but you see evidence of it everywhere, stunted growth. So I'm gonna measure you, okay? Victoria, a grandmother, <laughs> is a good funny. example. It's 53 and a half. A normal 10-year-old is 54 and a half. Wow. It's not just genetics. We drew this line to mark the average height for nine-year-olds worldwide. But these nine-year-olds living in rural Guatemala are about half a foot shorter than the average. We did the same thing in Florida with nine-year-olds of Guatemalan descent, born and raised in the United States with access to better food. They are all normal height or taller. Though especially dramatic here, stunting is actually a global problem. And it's not just height. It has also reduced mental ability. And a weakened immune system puts children at increased risk of dying of common diseases. She's permanently going to be stunted. And IQ is probably permanently impaired? You could say that, yes, her IQ will be impaired. Luke Armstrong from North Dakota runs Casa Jackson, a center for severely malnourished infants in Antigua, Guatemala. He's not doing any of the things a one-year-old should be able to do? Absolutely not. He can't walk? He can't walk. Decades into the global effort to stop malnutrition, scenes like this remain sadly familiar but it doesn't have to be this way. The United States ships a lot of food around the world, $2 billion worth every year. The problem is, it's not necessarily the right kind of food. By law, the bulk of the aid must be US grown and packaged and shipped. Mostly commodities like corn soy blend that doesn't provide the nutrients that babies really need. The second problem is getting nutrition to children early enough to make a difference, before the age of two, when developing bones and brains need it most. We found six-month-old babies who their entire diet consists of tortillas and coffee. And so Luke and his doctors fan out to rural villages on the hunt for babies in distress. On this day, they find two-month-old Griselda, brought here by her concerned mother Maria who suspected something was wrong, but had no idea how serious it was. With tears in her eyes, she agrees to let Griselda be taken to Casa Jackson for care. But if you just even touch her legs, it kind of feels like a water balloon. You can just see her veins just popping out of there. It's because she's retaining fluid. She could be weeks away from her organ shutting down. We went to Maria's home in the Mayan village of Cajal Gualten. Maria, her husband and six children live on less than one dollar a day. They raise beans and corn, but they don't have enough money to buy proteins like milk and meat. They make do the best they can. When Luke came here to take the baby to the center, you were crying. Were you afraid? It made me sad that this happened to my daughter because maybe it was my fault. All Maria's children are stunted, and probably not just physically. Liliana is 13, but she's had to drop out of school because, her mother says, she can't remember things. Did you learn to read and write? Why not? I want to learn, but I can't. Studies do show a link between stunting, lower IQ, and lower earning potential. Dealing with the problem of early childhood stunting, early childhood chronic malnutrition, is really the solution to breaking the cycle of poverty.